Warren Buffett said, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. But what happens if you don't want to work until you die? And what happens if you can't work until you die? That's why passive income is so important. Passive income is income that comes in whether you're working, sleeping, or playing. When your passive income is greater than your expenses, you are financially free. You're totally at choice about what you do with your precious time and your precious life energy because you don't have to work for money if you don't want to or can't. But how does passive income work? Is passive income legit or is it just a bunch of hype to get you to buy books and courses? In this video, I'm gonna break down what you need to know about passive income, passive income myths, passive income misconceptions, and passive income mistakes to avoid. Now, none of this should be taken as financial advice or investment advice. Don't make any financial decisions just based on a YouTube video, okay? But if you find this video helpful and educational, please tap the like button for the YouTube algorithm. That would really help me out and I appreciate it. By the way, I'm Penelope Jane Smith, and for over 20 years now, I've been super passionate about supporting entrepreneurs to create financial freedom by generating more than enough passive income to cover their expenses and lifestyle. When I first heard about passive income for the first time, shortly after I graduated college, my whole world changed. I started looking for ways that I could buy or create assets that would generate passive income for me. At the time, I didn't have a lot of money, but everyone has to start somewhere, right? My first experience of passive income, other than interest on my savings account, was to invest in a little candy machine. Have you ever seen those candy machines that have peanut M&Ms on one side and regular M&Ms on the other side, and you can pop in a quarter and get a little handful of M&Ms? I bought one of those. I filled it with M&Ms and I set it up in the lounge at my fencing club. I used to be nationally ranked in the Olympic sport of fencing, and I'd be at the club to train five days a week anyway, so this was a great spot. I calculated the cost of a single M&M, and I figured out how many M&Ms I would give other fencers for their 25 cents. Since then, I knew what my profit margin was per sale. I discovered that after donating 10% of the profits back to the junior fencing program, I was making a 40% return on my investment. <gasps> Since then, I've gone on to invest in all kinds of other assets, real estate, business, the stock market, precious metals like gold and silver, collectibles, foreign currency, crypto. I've had some great experiences and I've also made some of the biggest passive income mistakes you can make. So I'm excited to share what you need to know about passive income and bust some of the biggest passive income myths and passive income misconceptions so you can set yourself up for success. So first, it's important to know what passive income is and what it isn't. As I mentioned, passive income is income that comes in whether you're working, sleeping, or playing. The American Internal Revenue Service defines passive income as income from trade or business activities in which you do not materially participate. Some examples of passive income are rental income from real estate, earnings from a business that doesn't require the direct involvement or participation from the owner, royalties from publishing a book, or even from licensing intellectual property, earnings from internet advertisements on your websites, dividends and interest, even interest on private mortgages, income from vending machines that you own, like my little M&M machine, or income from online businesses that you've put on autopilot. One passive income misconception is that some people think they're receiving passive income when they're actually receiving something called residual income. For example, an insurance agent may earn residual income as her clients renew their insurance policies, which is great, but what happens if that insurance leaves the company? Does that income go away? In that case, that would be residual income, not passive income. If you're involved in a network marketing company or a multi-level marketing company, and you have to continue to work the business in order to get your income, that's not true passive income either. That's more residual income. If you can stop working the business altogether for as long as you want and still continue to receive your income, that's passive income. Now, 
nothing wrong with residual income. It's awesome. I am all for it. I just want to make sure you understand how passive income works. One of the biggest passive income myths or passive income misconceptions is that once you buy or create an asset that produces passive income, you're done. You may be under the impression that you don't have to spend any more time on it or manage it. You'll just hang out on the beach sipping Mai Tais while the money just flows in. What people don't know about passive income is that there are varying degrees of passive. So if you're wondering, is passive income legit? The answer is yes. And some income streams are more passive than others. For example, you can receive passive income from rental real estate, but real estate investing can be extremely time consuming. First of all, you have to find the right deal, which can feel like a full-time job to begin with, especially when you're just getting started. If you want to flip houses, you can definitely make a lot of money that way, but I'd consider it more of a business or job than an investment. Flipping houses isn't passive at all, but let's say you have a sweet deal just handed to you. Typically, when you buy a property, there's this initial stabilization process that can include anything from doing repairs to finding and screening new tenants. And then once the property is stabilized, you may be able to just sit back and receive rent checks for a while. But then a tenant moves out or the water heater breaks or a tree falls on the roof and you have to spend time on the property again. Even if you have a property manager, you still have to manage the manager. Now that's very different from a certificate of deposit at the bank where you buy it and that's it, you know, or putting money into a high yield savings account like Yada Savings. Link in the description if you wanna check that out. Of course, your potential income on the rental property is much higher than the potential income on the certificate of deposit if you know what you're doing. But be conscious of the difference between passive and residual income and of exactly how passive an investment really is. This is one of the reasons that I've put less focus on real estate investing lately and more focus on stocks, funds, and cryptocurrency. I like that I could just buy and sell these things in my TD Ameritrade account with the click of a button. So nice. So how do you get more passive income? There are two main types of passive income. The first type is where you have some money to invest and you buy an asset. You buy something that gives you passive income. Like I bought that candy machine, right? Or you might put 20% down on a rental property and buy that house. Or you might buy stocks or index funds or gold or cryptocurrency. Another passive income misconception is that the passive income has to come to you as a regular check in the mail or direct deposit into your account. I had a couple of clients share that they didn't like stocks and index funds because they didn't generate passive income, they just increased in value. Well, <laughs> that increase in value, that growth, still counts as passive income. That's still your money going out and working hard for you and making you more money. If you have money to invest, then the next step is to find assets that work for your situation and your risk tolerance. You might need to increase your financial education so you're not investing in something you don't understand and putting your hard earned money at risk. Now, what if you don't have a bunch of money to invest? How do you create passive income streams with little money? Or how do you create passive income with no money down? The second type of passive income comes from creating your own asset or passive income streams with little or even no money. For example, you might start an e-commerce business where you're selling products that you don't have to physically stock. How this works is you set up an online store with a drop shipping service. So when you sell something, a fulfillment center ships it to your customer for you and you don't have to deal with inventory, shipping, delivery. You can set up a solid marketing system that doesn't take a lot of your time. And this can be an awesome, mostly passive income stream. Or you might become an affiliate of someone else's business. One of my friends refers all of her clients to Kartra which is a wonderful all-in-one marketing platform to run your online business. 
once someone signs up for Kartra, they're unlikely to cancel and my friend receives ongoing affiliate commissions. Or you might start a YouTube channel and ask people to like and comment on your videos so the almighty YouTube algorithm will smile upon you and show your videos to a new audience who will also like and comment on your videos until one beautiful day, you'll have over a thousand awesome subscribers and rack up over 4,000 hours of watch time and your channel will finally be eligible for monetization, which means that now you can earn money from ad revenue. Can you tell I'm looking forward to that day? I'll have to do something fun to celebrate. Let me know in the comments what you think I should do to celebrate when this channel finally gets monetized. If you have money to invest, you'll probably be able to generate passive income more quickly than someone that doesn't. If you don't have any money to invest, you'll have to be willing to contribute time, energy, skills, resources, creativity, or all of the above. In my experience, the most realistic way to build passive income is to focus on incremental growth. Start by taking one small step. What's one action you can take this week? And since you've made it this far, if you found this video helpful, please tap the like button on this video if you haven't already done that, because it does make it more possible that maybe one day this could be a passive income stream for me. I'd love that. It also helps if you comment on the video. I'm especially curious about how this lands for you. What's one small step that you're gonna take this week towards having plenty of passive income in the future? If you'd like to see more videos from me around personal finance, money management, saving and investing, financial freedom, make sure to subscribe to this channel and click the little bell icon. Finally, if you wanna connect with me on social media, I'll post links in the description to my various accounts. Right now, I'm mostly on Facebook, Penelope Jane Smith, and I'd love to see you there. Thanks for watching and good luck creating massive passive income.